Morris, now Deputy Catherine Connolly is sharing with colleagues. Four minutes and three and three. Um, first of all, Minister, I'd like to say you are extremely helpful. So my comments are about a housing crisis. And the housing crisis hasn't been caused by difficult tenants or people refusing houses or indeed people objecting to planning permissions. Although we will always have a small minority. But they certainly didn't create the housing crisis. It's a deliberate crisis caused as a result of successive government policies. We know that. You're picking up the pieces. Uh, I appreciate that, but you're also part of the problem. And you believe, and the government believes, that the market will provide, and the market hasn't provided. And in 2009, in Galway City, we stopped building houses. Just stopped. We bailed out the banks, we looked after everybody, but we didn't look after the ordinary people on the ground. That was bad enough, except we created the problem. And so no social houses have been built in Galway, you know that. I have all the reports before me. There has been some progress. 14 houses between 2009 and 2018 were built in Galway. And to put Galway in perspective, that beautiful city that I come from, it is the second worst as in terms of rent in the country. Now we have all the debate, or most of the debate, in the, in the media on Dublin. And the report from the Council is that Galway is the second worst, and DAFT have confirmed that it has risen by 13%. The major contributory factor in landlords exiting the RAS scheme alone is that the city count that they cannot pay tenants cannot pay close to the current market rents. And this is, a, this is a pressure zone. This is a rent pressure zone. So the landlords that are there are ex exiting the market. We have over 4,000 households on the waiting list in Galway. They've been on that waiting list, some of them, since 2002. I know that for a fact. They're in and out of my office on a regular basis. We have 50 families. That's families, the actual number I'm unsure of, in emergency accommodation. 2.5 million that emergency accommodation cost last year. 2.5 million. To be precise, 2.455 197, almost two and a half million alone in private emergency accommodation. That's not to mention any of the shelters or any of the others. The families in emergency accommodation, as has been said, do not cover the women who are in, um, have fled homes as a result of domestic violence, nor does it cover the hundreds of people who are in direct provision who can't get out, even though they've achieved status, uh, because there's no accommodation available. You talk about social mix, or the Minister, and I appreciate he has other things on today, and I make no point in relation to that, except I heard him this morning, and I thought I was beyond despair. But when he talks about the HAP payment being helpful in having a social mix, I really want to give up. 431 million this year. It went from 150 in 17, it doubled in 18, and it's going up to 431, and possibly 500 this year in a HAP payment. Each year it's increasing and doubling to artificially back up the private market. And then we wonder why rents are rising, rising, rising. Galway City has 26 hectares of land alone zoned residential. In addition, and not counted in that, we have Cant Station with something like 14 acres of land. We have the dock land with acres of land. We have 150 acres between Galway City Council and the county in relation to the former airport. That's not to mention institutional land. What this motion will do, and I thank my colleague for bringing it and the work that's gone into it in declaring a crisis, it will make us act in a different manner because a house is not a product. It is a right of a person to have a home. And declaring an emergency is sending out a very strong message. My time has run out and I'll leave it like that. Girl